Well, thanks very much, Mike Kelly, for inviting me. I looked at the programme and I looked at the speakers. I saw Nigel and Bob Hanley. I thought, is he, does he really mean elderly surgeons in their approach to front? Peel on fractures. But certainly, uh, myself included, of course. In West London, we had plenty of... We had plenty of... Uh, <laughs> Do you need to go to the toilet now? Bob? Um, we have plenty of elderly patients uh, uh, leading unhealthy lifestyles in West London. So I'd just like to talk about my philosophy in approaching these fractures, particularly in this group of patients, why we do external fixation. And I haven't included plasters, because uh, I knew the definitive talk on that would have already happened. And then a little bit about operative technique. Well, pilon fractures, we all know, don't do very well. If you get a bad one, your outcome is going to be somewhere between uh, a spinal injury and multiple trauma. So clearly, very uh, bad outcome. And as we've already heard, above all, do no harm. So we need to l be careful about what intervention we uh, undertake. Now, this is the classic, really. It's regularly rubbish, but it's a rare thing in orthopaedics, or it certainly was in the 90s. It's a prospective randomised study. And they were all fellowship-trained surgeons, and the data was being presented when I was in the US, but it was rubbish at the time. And the internal fixation group were approached by surgeons trained in these techniques. They waited until the soft tissues became optimum. The external fixators were largely fixators that we wouldn't use and wouldn't recommend. And what about the outcomes? Well, if in their criteria for the outcomes, if you couldn't close the wound, not a problem. It wasn't a, a complication because it happens quite often. If it got infected, and a third did in the internal fixation group, half lost their leg. Now, that is a problem. There were no infections in the X-fix group, and this is a figure that's regularly repeated. So just keep that in mind, at least. And then outcomes uh, weren't related to the uh, radiological appearances, and they seemed to be better in the X-fix, although the X-rays weren't so good. For the juniors in the audience, this is really an important paper, and this is one that changed my practice, certainly distal radius, plateau, and pilon. We over-treat these injuries. The uh, AO approach, uh, anatomical reduction, not proven, and you can really uh, do a lot more damage. So uh, I would take note uh, of this symposium, and I don't think it's been bettered since. This is our um, St Mary's, this is our... Uh, strategy for approaching the peel on fracture. We do undertake internal fixation, but when the soft tissues are really affected, we try to limit the biological uh, damage and try and do a smaller surgical footprint. <coughs> the other thing about the elderly, what they bring to the case uh, is loss of dermal collagen, you've got thin, friable skin. This was nicely summarised recently in our hospital by Graham Glass, who looked at the uh, pre-tibial lacerations. Patients often have other problems. So the summary of their paper was there are limited plastic surgical options. So if you're going to do a, a big approach and you run into problems, there's only going to be one outcome. There aren't many specific peel on pa uh, papers on elderly fractures, but Pete Giannoudis got a combined series with Hanover, and you can see the results really not very good. Significant early amputation rate. There are a few loss to follow-ups. Uh, the primary arthrodesis didn't join. Lots needing bone grafting for delayed union and metalwork failures. Both groups, um, outcomes not optimum. So this, is, this really is a difficult uh, fracture pattern. So our first case, and I'm going to show three, three cases, 84-year-old community ambulator, uh, she's got an open fracture. She's fallen down the stairs. I think this is really begging for a little bit of shortening. We can close the wound. We put an X fix on this. We can mobilise her early. So here we are trying to reduce the hot sore damage. We're going to produce a male, female docking site. You can see the amount of shortening that's going to be undertaken. But that way we can get tension-free closure. Um, follow that by true early mobilisation, full weight bearing. You don't have to worry about your patients uh, fully weight bearing on the, uh, this construct. And we got fairly rapid union. An external fixation that you can have lots of different techniques, intraoperative and of course postoperative, to try and reduce these fractures without uh, disrupting the soft tissues. And again, here we can see just simple techniques to align the shaft element of your fracture. 
Well, here's a, a patient that came in as a Christmas present to me a couple of years ago when I was on call. It's an open fracture, elderly patient. I don't think this will do well in a cast, so I think we have to do something. <coughs> Get a CT scan to work out where we're going to do our limited incisions, and then put a frame on. So tips for um, elderly bone, we tend to use a lot more olive wires, half pins, no evidence that HA coating helps. Try and um, get a mortise joint together, but we don't go for pure anatomical reduction. We ignore the fibula. You can't compress and distract. We don't worry about fibula length. Don't think it's that related to outcome in these high-energy injuries. And then we mobilise the foot after about eight weeks. And there's the final outcome. And he may well need a fusion, but that would be relatively straightforward. Uh, and most importantly, he doesn't have residual infection. Now, the final case, we've got a series uh, in West London of elderly males clearing out their gutters in the autumn. Had some horrific injuries. Um, and this is one such gentleman who, who fell from a considerable height. You can see he's got elderly-looking bone, and that joint is clearly gone. So this would be an excellent indication for a primary ankle fusion. Um, so a bridging frame, get, get it aligned, small anterior incision, use a burr and a bit of bone graft, and then gently compress so we can get a primary fusion in this group. Problems are mainly related to the, the, the half pins and pin sites. Just go back one slide, because I've got something to show. The, look at the subtalar joint on that. I mean, you can't see it very well, but it doesn't look as clean as it might be. It's below the ankle. It's yeah. below the ankle. It's pretty stiff. Yeah, OK, because I'll show one later on, which, is, which contrasts with that. I'll show you one. He was pretty happy. Um, they all get subtalar stiffness, though, don't they? Smashed, peel off. OK, so... Small, all get infections at the pin site, uh, high incidence, particularly in the pilon fractures. Um, this is the largest series I could find, Hudson from South Florida. One joint infection. <coughs> Importantly, no amputations in a, in a relatively large series. So, in summary, um, this is our strategy. What do we do when there's a, an elderly patient with poor soft tissues? They probably go across to the right-hand column uh, and get... Uh, an external fixator rather than internal fixation. Thanks very much. Thanks a lot.